Hello everyone, in this tutorial I will show you how to use events. Events can be useful because you get rid of getting components and dependencies between objects. In other words, you don't need to connect data from other classes. Let's see the structure. First we create an event, then we add subscribers to that event. Note that you can have many subscribers to one event. When you fire or start an event, all subscribers are notified and execute code. The key thing is that event doesn't know who are subscribers, they don't depend on each other. In this example I start one event and each of these objects executes code. In another example we see how to open doors with the event system. Also in the end there is one tip for you. Let's see how to create simple events. Create a new empty object, that will be the event manager. Next I will add the event manager script. First we need to include the system namespace. Then create public static event action. The action is a specific type of delegate that we use for events. I will call it example event. Make sure it's static so we get easy access in other classes. The next thing we need to decide is when to start the event. For this simple example I will start the event from the update function. Check if the left mouse button is pressed. Then check that event is not null to prevent errors. After checking, call the event. There is a short notation for this. You can save one line of code by writing question mark dot invoke. It's the same thing. Now we need to subscribe functions to this event. In the scene I have one square object. It has change size script. Open it. Let's create one function called increase size. Now let's add this function to the event. In the start function write event manager dot example event. We use the plus equal sign to add the function. Now we subscribe to the example event and when we press the left mouse button this function will be called. Let's try it. Press the mouse button. Nice. However it's important to unsubscribe and remove functions from events. Let's destroy this object and press the mouse button again. We have one error. Let's fix it. Use the onDisable function and unsubscribe with the minus equal sign. This will remove the function from the event when the object is disabled or destroyed. Let's destroy it. Press the button again and we don't have errors. Great. Note that we can subscribe more functions to the same event. I have another square in the scene with the change color script. Let's create one function that will change the color. Again in the start we need to subscribe to the event. Don't forget to unsubscribe. Now press the button and event will trigger all subscribed functions. It's easy to add more objects and subscribe them to the event. It's important to notice that these objects are not connected, they don't share any data between them. Now let's see the more practical use and how to start events outside of Event Manager. In this example we start the event when the player enters this blue trigger. First in the Event Manager add another event. I call it Open Door Event. Then we need a public static function that will start the event. The idea is to call this function when the player enters the trigger. Select the trigger and open the door trigger script. Inside on trigger enter 2D we start the door event. Next choose what needs to happen, which means we need to add functions to the event. Select the door and open the door script. We create the function that will change the bool variable. That change will start to move the door in the update function. Add open door function to the open door event. Let's try it. To recall, on the event manager we created open door event. The door has one function subscribed to the event and we start that event in this trigger. Again, notice that these objects don't share any class data and that is the purpose of the event system. Nice. However, if you add more doors, all of them will open. We need to use some kind of identification. We can pass parameters to actions. 
Use parameter when defining start door event function. Go to the door trigger script and create a trigger ID. Use it when calling the event. Then go to the door script, create public door ID. Open door function will use trigger ID and we need to check if trigger ID is equal to the door ID. Only then we open the door. In Unity, trigger ID is 0. Select the first door and make sure that door ID is 0. Let's create another trigger. Set ID to 1. Select the other door and set door ID to 1. The blue trigger will open the first door and the yellow trigger the second door. Nice! Now I have one tip for you. This is not a tutorial about static instances and singleton pattern, but if you know something about them, you can make a static event manager instance. Make sure that you have only one event manager in the game with singleton pattern. Notice that now you don't need static keyword before events. Now you start events and functions with static event manager instance. And that's it. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe.